Welcome to Zephyr Yoga Inspiration. I offer these podcasts for free, and your support really does make a difference and is appreciated. To make a donation, please click the link in the episode description or visit ZephyrYoga.com. Welcome everyone to this practice. Um, In this week's practice, we're rethinking our connection to our abdominals, which we call our core, creating more stability and mobility within the trunk of the body. Um, As we have been working with our pelvis, our shoulders, we're kind of connecting the um, upper body and lower body through our awareness of the core, this practice. Now, a lot of us consider our core muscles being our six-pack muscles, our rectus abdominis muscles. Unfortunately, this is not just our core because the rectus abdominis muscles connect to the cartilage around our top of our ribs and feed into the um, connective tissue that um, attaches the diaphragm. Now, the rectus abdominis muscles come down and attach to the pubic bone. Now, all they are um, useful for is actually flexing the spine. So just bending the spine forwards and back up, this is what your six pack muscles do. It does aid when you're trying to push like you're on the loo or trying to get a baby out. (laughs) Or when you cough like myself, you'll start to feel that the diaphragm and the upper um, rectus abdominis muscles help kind of push air out. So there's this sense of exhaling um, and contracting the front abdominals called the rectus abdominis muscles. Um, Some of the other core muscles that I talk about regularly is the transverse abdominis muscles. These are your corset muscles. Now, the upper transverse abdominis actually connect to the cartilage of your outer ribs and the fibers move towards the center in that knitting. The middle part of your transverse is like a belt. They come from the back of the body and wrap around to the front. And then the lower attach to your hip points and the groins and draw to center. Now, these transverse abdominal muscles are those corset muscles that knit everything together. And they are directly linked to your multifidi muscles in your spine. So the upper um, transverse um, turn on the more um, thoracic and upper lumbar uh, multifidi. Your waist uh, transverse do more of your lumbar and your lower um, transverse does more of your lower and sacrum multifidi. Now multifidi are like They're shaped like little V's that go up your spine. They're like little airbags. So when you engage your transverse abdominis muscles, these multifidi muscles um, engage and actually stabilize the spine and uh, extend the spine. So you can feel it if you do a little pujasana where your tummy sticks out and then you knit together, you'll notice that your spine lengthens. There's a sense of stability and extension. When you relax your tummy muscles, there's a depression of the spine, you bear down, and your tummy sticks out and your spine becomes more flexible. Whereas when you knit, there's this sense of ascending and you feel stronger. Now multifidi and transverse abdominis muscles only like mid-range movement. They do not like extreme hyperextensions or hyperflexions. So um, you'll notice in a lot of our yoga poses, The spine is extending, and we really work with these transverse abdominis and multifidi to kind of stabilize so we can create more openness in our body. So those are those two sets. The other muscles that we're gonna work with are our obliques. Our obliques are our kind of sideways muscles that are involved with our ability to twist and laterally flex. You have two sets on either sides. You have external obliques where the fibers run down and the internal obliques, the fibers run up. So when we say twist, remembering a few weeks ago when we worked with our pelvis and spine, there's a difference between rotations and twists. So your hips are moving the opposite way your shoulders are in twists. 
and you can feel the obliques working more effectively in this way. As I twist my chest to the left and I turn my hips to the right, your external obliques, the fibers that run down, actually encourage the ribs to twist to the left. And now your internal obliques help draw that energy together by drawing your hips to the right and they work. As you inhale and exhale, they work together to create that harmony, that sense of working together. Um, and you'll see with lateral um, flexion, the, the obliques work together to help stabilize your body and create more mobility. And you'll see that in our practice. So those are kind of like our front and our side um, core muscles. Now, we normally mistake um, these muscles in the back as back muscles, but they're actually core muscles. So these are your quadricep lumborum these little back muscles. You can feel them and stick your thumbs into the side and move side to side and you'll feel them actually work. Now, these quadris lumborum muscles are real strong core muscles. They, they help with lateral flexion and extension and also with helping you flex um, the spine and pelvis. They are so important with regards to walking and also sitting. Now, the tendency is these muscles become exhausted because we sit behind a desk all day like this and then our rectus abdominis muscles get locked short and tight. We're not really using our front core and so our back core has to work so strong to help keep us upright. So usually if you sit behind a desk and you get up and your back hurts, is because your quadricep lumborum is working so hard to actually keep you upright. And then when you stand up, you're like, oh, my back hurts. When you come to yoga and you demand more movement uh, and activity of those muscles, and then you sp have a sp back spasm. Spasms are usually muscles that have been working so much and you demand more from them and they can't handle it anymore and they just peter out and they start to spasm because they just don't have enough um, energy to help support you. And because there's that imbalance because you're not using your front core, you're just using your back core too much. So noticing when we are practicing, we're going to try to really wake up the front core so we can actually take off some of the pressure the back core has um, been accumulating and then trying to integrate it and actually feel the front core helping the back core um, uh, move in asana more effectively. So right in so your quadricep borum attaches to T12L1 and um, um, the kind of lower ribs and the connected tissue feeds up into the diaphragm as well. And then it, it attaches to your upper hip bone, your ilium bone. And so you can feel that movement of lateral flexion of that attachment. Now, right in front of your quadricep lumborum is the elusive psoas. In yoga, we're really interested in the psoas. However, most people are like, I don't get it. And trust me, we're still like learning so much about the psoas. Like some of us have two psoases. Some of us actually have three. It's just genetically what you're kind of given, but we don't really know unless you have an MRI scan or you have an autopsy or some surgery. So normally the psoas is attached to T12L1 in the same area of the quadricep lumborum and then where the, the diaphragm actually attaches. So all that connective tissue is um, around the same area and it runs right in front of that quadricep lumborum. So that big fat muscle right in front of it is the psoas. Now it goes right behind your internal organs, your bowels, and then it goes right in front of your hip bone, yeah? So right in front of your lower bowels, your uterus, your bladder. And then as it comes forward, it crosses um, the groin and attaches to your lesser trochanter, the inner thigh. Now, this muscle crosses nine joints. Now that's a lot, and it's not like stretching a hamstring. Um, we can lengthen a psoas, but we can't stretch it like a normal muscle because of how many joints it crosses. 
and how it actually moves and, and engages. So the psoas is a hip flexor and a spinal flexor. When you stand up like Ukatasana, this is working the psoas muscle. When you're on your back, what the psoas muscle does, it helps flex the spine and bend the knees. So the psoas, um, the upper psoas can create a back bend or a flexion. But the lower psoas is, job is to actually flex the pelvis. So they work together um, to be able to create um, that flexion, either of the spine and the hips. Now, the psoas doesn't have a lot of nerves, so you can't really feel it as such, because if you did, you'd feel all your food digest and all the other things that happen down here. So it doesn't have a lot of nerves, but it is connected to the vagus nerve. So when you are in touch with like um, your breath work and the sens sensitivity of the subtle body and the prana pattern of the inhale and exhale, you will notice a certain um, quality of sensation of releasing, letting go and engagement. So when you um, connect to that muscle, notice um, your thoughts, your emotions might be tethered up in it. Uh, so I'm just saying this because <laughs> your psoas quadratum borum and your diaphragm are right next to your adrenal glands. So your kidneys are here, your adrenal glands are here, and they're meant to be there. So when all of a sudden a tiger comes up, or a bear comes up to you, you get a hit of adrenaline and cortisol, stress hormones, to get you to run and breathe and move those muscles real fast. However, we don't see very many tigers or bears, but we face them in our screen of our laptop and we start to stress out and we're not moving and all of a sudden all these muscles are getting all of the, those strong hormones from your adrenal glands and then all of a sudden you're like, I got backache and I got a back spasm and I'm, I'm locked up. So there is this kind of correlation of like, if you notice yourself dealing with something very stressful, get up and somatically release it. Don't let it stay in your muscles and your tissues. Because a lot of the time when we come to yoga practice, you'll start to feel like, this deep release and these kind of emotional holding and this kind of like weird surges of emotions. And it's like your body, hold everything that you go through. And sometimes your body doesn't understand what you're going through. You might be projecting in the future of something of you can't control and you're trying to figure out and it's stressing you out. Your body thinks it's happening in real time. Or you're reflecting in the past, something's triggered you and your body thinks it's happening in real time, but it's in the past. So the psoas muscles really linked to the vagus nerve and your body holds um, memories and it will um, behave in certain ways. So the breath is key to self-regulating this. So the last little bit of the core that I wanna talk about is your diaphragm and your pelvic floor diaphragm. So your diaphragm covers in a three degree, a three dimensional area, the whole circumference of your, your um, upper waist. Now, as you exhale, your diaphragm lifts up like a parachute and as you inhale, it turns into a bowl. As you exhale, your lungs empty. And as you fill your lungs, it presses down onto your inner organs, hence your belly sticking out. You'll notice that the pelvic floor diaphragm does the same. As you exhale, mula bandha happens, the pelvic floor lifts. And as you inhale, your pelvic floor presses down and your diaphragm presses down. There's this natural movement of this work. Now, I want you in this practice to really focus on when you exhale, feel mula bandha and you feel this uh, emptying of your lungs, lifting of your diaphragm, knitting together, and sometimes twisting, engaging the core, but then allowing the breath to come in and feel that fullness, the pelvic floor diaphragm. We want healthier range of motion because a lot of the time we are holding tight and we're stressing and we never allow ourselves to create some room to breathe. So we'll create that sense of spaciousness as well as engagement. So that full range of motion. And this is really pointing to Yoga Sutra 246, how to practice asana 
Stila and Sukum. We first create stability, steadiness, engagement, strength, this integrity of tone and that tensegrity, that tensile force of seeing how everything is in there connected and to create a stronger body and a connection to that. That will give us the opportunity to experience Sukum, that ease, that comfort, that openness, that flexibility in which we can effortlessly abide in the body, feeling strong and stable. If we search for flexibility too much and then stability, we're too um, unbounded. We need to actually contain um, our, our asana in which then we can abide in it. So stira first and then sukham. If you would like to continue to practice, find out more information about the topics discussed, or to donate to this podcast, please visit ZephyrYoga.com or follow the link in the episode description. I thank you.